Hello, thank you for joining us. I'm Bill Harris, and this is Life Questions, a program that addresses your questions about life from a biblical perspective. If you are among the viewers who have sent us a question, stay tuned. We just may be addressing your question today. We're joined by a panel of local ministers who have been researching for answers, and our panel members include uh, Pastor Alan um, Sudman of the Union Chapel Missionary Church here in Lima, Pastor Janet Wynn of Cornerstone Church, also in Lima, Pastor Rick Lamb of Hume United Methodist Church, and we're rounding off our panel with Pastor Mark Bird of Revive Ohio. Thank you all of us for being with us today. Thank you. We're happy to have you with us. As we begin, you know, one of the more recent things that has been uh, just water-like refreshing to the Church of Jesus Christ is the uh, situation down in Asbury College of uh, Kentucky. And we have two members with us here who have uh, been down there and participated in that, that historic event. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about it, what God has been doing down there. Let's start with you, Pastor Janet. Can okay. you start? Okay, well, as most people have probably heard, it started at Asbury University. It's a Christian university and they have chapel about three times a week and during one of the chapel services there, it got to the end of the chapel service and uh, the gentleman uh, who had been preaching kind of closed it out and a couple of the students wanted to stay around and just pray and uh, seek God and as they began to do that, Everybody else had left. Other students started to hear that others had stayed and started to come back. Professors started to hear. Yeah. Students had gone back. They heard people worshiping, heard people praying. And then one of the young men just really began to share his heart and really began to repent and to just cry out from the depths of his heart. And to me, the beauty of what will happen down there is to see the hunger. To me, hunger is the key to all of mm -hmm. it. Them hungering and thirsting for God. His word told us if we would hunger and thirst after righteousness, yes. we would be filled. Amen. And just to see the beauty of that, it was so simple and yet God's presence was so powerfully mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have been praying and believing and crying out for uh, just God, for a move of God, mm -hmm. for God to move in our churches, in our cities, in our nations, and to see that happening amongst especially the young people. Mm -hmm. He's restoring us back to our first love and saying it's, it's not about anything else. Jesus was at the center and he was kept at the center. I, I heard someone had say it, it, it was about <coughs> passion and not about polish, and that is so true. Um, the music, they just had some various people singing songs very simply. Um, music was off key very often. <laughs> Even the congregation sounded better very often than the people were leading the music, but it wasn't about that. Right. It wasn't about that, it was about Jesus. It was about people authentically connecting their heart to God and, and that relationship with God and falling in love with Him, whether again or for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And it was really, really a beautiful thing to yeah. get to ex witness. It's good to see, see that you were latching on to the things that, not, not, not necessarily latching on to the things that went wrong, but you were latching on to those things that went right. Yes. And that's what propels things forward yes. with that attitude. Pastor, what, what was your experience like? <clears throat> I think <clears throat> it was so much bigger than an event, but it was a God event mm -hmm. uh, that people were drawn to. And I, I think other than the word hunger, I would tie another H word, harvest. Hmm. On, a, mm -hmm. on the night I was there, and, and you know, the low estimate is 55,000 people outside of campus drew into this small little town. Others say up to 100,000. But what was interesting, uh, while I was there, a professor got up and just shared a simple salvation message in just a couple of minutes and said, if you don't know Jesus but would like to stand up, and I wasn't in the college campus chapel, I was in the seminary chapel where it was an overflow. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, people stood up everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, lost people came. Mm -hmm. right? And then they were ready to accept Christ. And in the four hours of one time I was there, people were at all five buildings, people were at the altar constantly, three, four here, four here, and then they'd leave and four others would come up. But the, at the moment this professor said, and he didn't do an altar call, he just said, stand up right wherever you are. 
And they stood up and then what blew him away is he said, just whisper this prayer after me, dear Jesus. They didn't whisper. They were so feeling it yeah, yeah. that they just said, dear Jesus. And I was in the other building, but it was loud enough that it picked up on the mic and wow. went into where we were live streaming. And, and uh, it was just, and the, and the professor stopped, he goes, I wasn't ready to hear you. And being a pastor, I've led two, three people to the Lord at a time and heard them pray that out loud. But to hear 60, 80 people pray it out loud. And then what's neat is different college campuses came down, tasted it, called for an, an, a university in Michigan, the U, U of M, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that in Ohio. But uh, <laughs> a couple people went up there and said, we're gonna do a service in about two days. So they called everybody together, 88 people came to Christ. Wow. And from campus to campus, it isn't just about feeling the spirit, though that's a great thing. Sure. It's lives are changed for eternity. Yes. Oh, amen, yeah. amen. The other thing that I thought was so beautifully uh, evident, um, I think sometimes churches have made things about people, about celebrities, about platforms, personalities. Uh, personalities. <laughs> and this was about Jesus and Jesus only, and everybody else was just in the mix. And I think that's what we're, God is saying. This is about my body, being my body, everybody being involved and in doing the work that I've called you to do. You know, he didn't, he did, he called the fivefold to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, not the fivefold to be doing all of the ministry. And I think he's, he's writing that right now. And so it was beautiful to see that people getting up, going to the altar at just various times and just, just having this intimate relationship. And so there were many different, uh, people that are well known in ministry, whether they're speakers, uh, worship leaders, different people, even news stations that reached out to them, said, we would like to come and uh, we would like to you know, be a part. And they turned all of them down. They turned the news stations down. They turned the preachers down. They turned the worship leaders down. They said, this isn't about anybody but Jesus. Yeah. And uh, that was beautiful. I'm curious to know from each of you, how has this affected your individual ministries going forward with you, first of all, Pastor Janet? Well, we have for a very long time, as well as I know everybody else has just been praying and crying out and hungering for a move of God, knowing that God wants to do something mm -hmm. in the earth and have started at the very beginning of the year preaching about God's doing a new thing, preaching about a multi-generational move of God, that it's the Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph generation, all serving God together, that it's a generation of passion, not of age. Then talking about the suddenlies of God that were getting ready to happen and preached that on the 5th, and this broke out on the 8th of mm -hmm, February. Mm -hmm. And um, during January, we had been having nights of prayer for people to just come open prayer. Anybody in the community mm -hmm. on Saturday nights, just come, get in God's presence, just seek God you know, for yourself, have a place where you can get away from your normal life and connect with God. And we just felt led to extend that then in February. And now we've extended it on the Saturdays in March. And it's been really, really powerful. As a matter of fact, one of the pastors in town had come on Saturday night husband just plays and just creates an atmosphere it's just for you and you to get with God but um, mm -hmm. he said he was so overcome with the presence of God he said I haven't felt that kind of presence since 1987 wow. and wow. so I just feel like God is coming to us and saying I am drawing you back mm -hmm. to the right. intimacy of relationship with yeah. myself yeah. where it's not about religion or traditions of men. It's just about intimacy of relationship with me. Excellent, Pastor Alan, what about you? I, I think it's, it's continued to show me the hope of younger generations that are hearing God and connecting with God. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the other thing for me is, you know, this revival kind of happened as it was building in the dark. We see it now mm -hmm, and we mm -hmm. see God flowing, <clears throat> but never forget in the midst of our struggles, God's already working. Yes. And by the time the plant is grown, we get a harvest. Right. Yeah. And uh, God is really up to something. And now is the time. Yes. We just need to realize our time is short. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, Pastor Vic and Pastor uh, Mark, I appreciate your patience. No <laughs> but uh, jump in now and, and tell us, uh, even though you haven't been there, what do you think going forward? What do you think uh, personally now uh, for your own selves and your own ministries? Well, I've, I've found for a long time that uh, people are more willing to hear about Jesus than sometimes we're willing to talk about him. You mm. know, that people are hungry, but they're, they're reticent to say anything. And so uh, I see this as just a, an opportunity where, like you say, there were lots of people that were not saved who had gone down there specifically to find out more about Jesus. Who is he? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so beautiful that, that God is using this opportunity then to, to draw the unbelievers into the midst of a movement of his own making and and to see the things going on. And once they see it, all they need is someone to encourage them just a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then they say, yeah, I want to do that. What are the words? I don't know the words. And, you know, you're a sinner. Christ died for your sin. <laughs> Pastor Mark? Yeah, so it, it's exciting for me because I did not get to go there personally, but uh, read lots of the testimonies and watch some of the videos and stuff, and it reiterates what these guys said already. But one of the things that got me was that we were contacted by a couple of the universities in Ohio already, and, uh, and they were opening up their doors for us to come in and do really? what we do and train and equip yeah. them. And, and it was, again, they called us. And so the, the hunger wow. is stirring. Yes. And never had we really fully engaged on university campuses. We've had kind of hit or miss things in our ministry, but uh, now all of a sudden they're opening up the doors and I got a call from one of the professors at this university. He said, in fact, why don't you come into my classes mm -hmm. and why don't you share what you do with all yeah. the students, which really was amazing. And you, you might explain a little bit what Revive Ohio is all about and how this dovetails into everything you're talking about right now. Yeah, it's just, it's just what Janet touched on. It's for us to equip the church Right, equip the saints for the work of ministry, not just certain celebrities or right. certain personalities, but for the whole church to do this. And I think what's beautiful about it is that they protected that yes. at Asbury. They said, no, this is not going to be about anything. And it was interesting, I was on an outreach when the news kind of came out and this mm -hmm. first started get, getting going. Church. And, and, and the people asked, they said, well, why is God showing up here? And mm -hmm. I said, well, I think it's this. They just refuse to stop. <laughs> and I heard so Janet good. say that. And yes. I said, that's what it is. Yes. We all go, well, what time's the salad bar close? And we got to go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. But I think the, these group of people were so hungry yes. and so ready for the harvest mm -hmm. that they said, we're not going to stop until we get a hold of Jesus. Yeah. Kind of like the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Oh, and if yeah. I could add to that also, I am so so excited because we've been praying as well for college campuses and for those doors to be opening for you. I just want to shout right now. <laughs> that is so awesome. And so one of the things as well we are responding to is that younger generation, they have gone through so much where everything in life has told them things are hopeless, things are helpless, they don't have vision, they don't have purpose, they don't have... So that is one of the things I think God capitalized on and said, no, you do have a purpose. Right. I have vision for you. I have purpose for you. And so we have been gathering with this uh, younger generation and saying, no, we want to help equip you. We want right. to give you a voice. We want to give mm -hmm. you opportunity mm -hmm. to lead because they're hungry to know yeah. the purpose that God has for their lives. And so we have to be leaders who say, yeah. let us help you um, raise up in that and be all that God's called you to be. Okay. We need to pause here for a break, but uh, I'd like to continue our discussion and get into some more things about uh, reaching, touching souls and college campuses and everywhere else in, in society where it's needed. And we'll be right back right after this message. Stay with us. Don't go away. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. 
All right, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. And uh, another viewer question that we have here, why does it matter whether or not Jesus was literally raised from the dead? Why does that matter, Pastor Mark? Well, I think it matters because it is the crux of everything that we uh, live for, honestly, mm -hmm. that we bank our lives on. And uh, one scripture that comes to my mind in this is 2 Corinthians 4.14. And Paul writes to the Corinthians saying, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is that hope, yes. literally, that we have mm -hmm. to hold on to. That is the crux of everything. And it says, and will present us with you. Yeah. So this is what we share. And this is what we, so it is the biggest deal of all, right? And of course, uh, also in Romans 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So it's like that important, mm -hmm. right? It's yeah. that important. And so it, it's a big deal. Yeah, and it's just like down to Asbury, the, the message that was carried on there about Christ being carried on right. all throughout this nation and again, all around the world. You're going to add to oh, Yeah, well, uh, he was in uh, 2 Corinthians. I went to 1 Corinthians 15, 13, and 14. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is our faith. Mm. There's nothing there. But then just a few verses later, Paul clears it up, and he says, but Christ has indeed been raised right. from the dead. Mm -hmm the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So, mm -hmm. so we have an assurance that, that Jesus has risen from the dead and that he is uh, wanting to draw all men to himself. Um, eternal life seems to be a constant question in the New Testament. I mean, we see the lawyer in Luke uh, 10, and he says, what, what, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? We see uh, the y rich young ruler, good master, what shall I do to you know, inherit eternal life? Uh, Mary, or Martha, I mean, when her brother was in the grave and she said, uh, uh, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know he'll rise in the resurrection at the last day. And, and Jesus said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. So, so, you know, we have, you know, there's plenty of places where we learn about how important it is for us to believe, just like you read, that it's impossible to do this without believing, right? Right, right. You know, one of the questions that a uh, viewer wrote in to ask is, why doesn't God reveal himself more obviously in everyday life? What, what do you think, Pastor Allen? Oh, I, I think he does reveal himself, and we were talking about some great scriptures. But uh, to, to kind of tie it in with the question already done, you know, in all four of the Easter stories, there's nowhere that says Jesus walked out of the grave. The reason the stone rolled away was so we could look in oh, that's cool. and see that he didn't one, our Jesus is too powerful. He doesn't need a door. <laughs> but Amen. secondly, with that stone rolled out of the way, we could see he's already defeated death forever. forever. And uh, that stone was rolled away for the love he has for us so we could look in. And if we're looking and we're looking for an experience with him, we'll find it. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking is that, that things go on every single day. I mean, I was driving last night and this guy was backing out of his drive right onto the highway. I mean, you know, I had to go around him. And then uh, before I got to town, there was another guy that decided to pull right in front of me and get into a parking lot. I mean, what are these people thinking? And, you know, but God protected me every single time. And so if we're looking for God's protection, if we're looking for Jesus to do something in our lives, we'll see it. But if we're, uh, you know, continually blinking at the miraculous things that go on in our lives and not see it as for what it is, yeah, we're going to miss it, yeah. you know? Yeah. There's no megaphone. God doesn't have to use a megaphone. He just does it. And he does it for everybody. He does it for everybody. Some of us see it. Some of us don't. 
Well, I, I just think of this. He is the only God to predict his own death yeah. and resurrection mm -hmm. and pull it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the only God right. to die for his own creation. Yeah. No other God has ever done that. That's right. What do you think? Well, I, I don't mean to yeah. cut in, but we were talking earlier about in Romans 1.20, his invisible qualities yeah. have been seen through what he's made, through creation. Yeah. And so everybody's without excuse. And if you go to Romans chapter 2, it says in the conscious speaks. And we know when we're doing wrong. Right. And so between creation and conscience, uh, the other thing I say real quickly is Moses' people had the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud, and they still didn't want to obey. <laughs> and they had evidence every day of manna, mm -hmm. but they didn't want manna, they wanted quail. So then yeah, they get yeah. quail, and then they want something else. Yeah. And uh, it's still <laughs> the same today. Never said you know, right. The Bible says if we seek him, we will find him. Yeah. Uh, it goes back to what, what are we looking for? You know, if we're looking for the negative, we find the negative. What are we looking for? And I love this scripture in the Amplified Classic Version. It's John chapter 14, verse 21. It says, the person who has my commands and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever really loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love him and will show, reveal, manifest myself to him. I will let myself be clearly seen by him and make myself real to him. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are hungry for, is hungry for him to be real, to experience him. And it comes down to uh, hearing him, loving him, and obeying his commands. He said, if you, if you hear me and you obey me, yes. <laughs> you're showing that you love me and I will reveal myself to you. Well, and the beauty about o obedience is that God didn't do it. God didn't give us the, the uh, rules to hinder our, right. our uh, life, to make it, you know, I've taken away all the fun, you can't do these things, that's why I make the rules. That's not the reason why he made right. the rules. Exactly. He made the rules for our good. Yes. Everything that he says is for our good. Absolutely. That, that if we obey the rules, we will have a better life. And it's promised in Ephesians that we'll have long life and length mm -hmm. of days mm -hmm. if we're just obedient to these mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. Here's a question from another viewer. Um, how should you or shouldn't you look for biblical answers to modern questions such as abortion, death penalty, stem cell research, and a, a host of other questions that have cropped up in modern day society? Right. How, again, the question there, how should you or shouldn't you look for biblical answers to these kinds of modern questions. How do you answer that? I think it's that? interesting, Bill, that when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he told them, he said, you search the scriptures. Well, and now I'm going to paraphrase good. for a second. You're looking for me and I'm right here. <laughs> and I think that's what's happening here, right? I think people talk about these things and like, well, should I or shouldn't I? But the Bible, the word of God is alive and it is active and it's powerful and it judges and discerns the thoughts and intentions of every heart. Yes. So it's the answer to every question. Mm -hmm. The scripture is Jesus is the answer to every yes. question. So I think if you, if you don't search out the word for these questions, I think you're blind. Like Jesus told the Pharisees, you're poor, miserable, blind and naked. <laughs> and I think that's what's happening. You will remain poor, miserable, blind, and naked if you aren't seeking out the answers to life, life yeah. questions. And I love what you said. It's about being in relationship with him. If you're in relationship with him, he is going to convict you. He is going to show you what the right answers are. Amen. And to go back to it being about relationship, even though, yes, there are things he wants us to obey for our good, but it's all about relationship. Yeah. It's all about relationships. Well, look at this question here. Um, how, this is an interesting question. How do you get out of a pattern of sin? Somebody must be reaching out for help here. How do you get out of a pattern of sin? Well, I learned quite a long time ago that um, uh, repentance is a big part mm -hmm. of, of breaking the pattern. Because the more we repent, mm -hmm. And we rely on 1 John 1, 9. Uh, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, uh, and so if we confess our sin, uh, then 
uh, we, we become more sensitive to the sin. And as becoming more sensitive to the sin, we're less inclined to do the thing that we've been doing. And, and the benefit of repentance is that we, we um, the sin which brings judgment and guilt and all of that, the, the opposite to that out of the fruit of the Spirit is joy. That we experience joy when we're clean inside. We get joy from God and, and we rejoice in being free from the sin. And, and so, uh, and, and Satan likes to tell us that uh, if you sin and you repent right away, that's not fair to God. If Satan were really concerned about God, he would suggest quit sinning rather than quit <laughs> repenting, don't you think? <laughs> I mean, it just makes sense, but he's not, that's not Satan's policy. Mm -hmm. That's not his goal. And so, uh, and so we, can, we can sin one instant and the very next minute ask God for forgiveness. Cleanse me, Jesus, by your blood. You hung on the cross for my sin. Cleanse me once again. Make me free from this sin. And, and, and we can go back right into the joy of the Lord and keep on going. Mm -hmm. Quickly, you, either one of you want uh, to add? Proverbs 28, 13 says, if you conceal your sin, you'll stay there. Yeah. But if you confess it and renounce it, yes. and we not only have to admit our sin to someone, so that they own it, we own it, but also renounce it, speak against it, get mad at yeah, it. Yeah. And then I'd say just the one other thing real fast is uh, get out of anything that pulls you deeper into yeah. it. Right. It could be a good thing at first, yes. but if it's pulling yeah. you to evil, then yeah. get out of the, even that good thing. Very quickly, Sister Jan, yeah, we've got so about a minute left. Absolutely Wait. starts with repentance. I agree absolutely with that. You gotta submit yourself to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And whatever you feed grows. Mm -hmm. So don't feed that thing, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Get around right associations that can help support yep. you. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the bad news here is that we're, we've run out of time. <laughs> right. The good news, though, for our audience particularly, you, this fine panel that we're enjoying right here is going to be with us again next week. So don't, don't despair. Just tune in again <laughs> next week at the same time at the same station. So I've just got to say goodbye, and I want to thank you all for the wisdom that you've shared with us today, and we're looking forward to hearing more from you next week. And stay with us, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.